Welcome back to my channel everyone. Alright, without further ado, let us dive straight into the recap of Roshidere Light Novel, Volume 5, Part 2. So, in the previous part, Masachika got tangled up with his first love, but Masha decided to hold off on responding to his feelings for the sake of her sister Alia's happiness. However, Masha did not give up that easily. She is ready to accept Masachika if he ever breaks up with Alia. Now, in part two, we see a moment when Masachika returns home in the evening. On the way, he is lost in thought, reflecting on an unexpected encounter that changed his perspective on himself. But as soon as he arrives in front of the house gate, his attention is suddenly drawn to an unexpected sight. His little sister, Yuki, lounging in a mini pool while wearing a school swimsuit. Seeing this scene, Masachika can only shake his head in disbelief at his sister's antics. He yells, half annoyed and half confused. But instead of feeling embarrassed, Yuki just gives him a sly grin and replies, I am just relaxing, Oni-chan, so my brother can enjoy the view of my body. Hearing that response, Masachika can only surrender and shake his head while Yuki continues teasing him. They start bickering as usual, with Yuki pushing his buttons and Masachika firmly rejecting her antics. Once they start arguing, the sibling drama between these two is tough to stop. Masachika approaches Yuki and gently pats her head. Arguing with his sister, he realizes, is surprisingly effective in helping him momentarily forget all his troubles. However, Yuki mischievously sprays water on his face. Laughing wide, Masachika grows frustrated and gives Yuki a playful tap on the head, laughing along with her. Noticing her brother getting annoyed, Yuki apologizes and tells him to go change clothes in the bathroom. Soaking wet, Masachika sighs in frustration and heads off, leaving Yuki still giggling. When he reaches the bathroom and opens the door, he is greeted by an unexpected sight. Ayano is standing there, her petite frame clearly visible. Realizing that Yuki has tricked him again, Masachika panics and quickly closes the door, his face turning red. Hastily, he apologizes for interrupting, but Ayano, ever so innocent, steps out of the bathroom and starts drying Masachika's wet face with the towel she just used. Masachika is stunned as Ayano's exposed body is once again right in front of him. His face turns red and he hurriedly scolds Ayano to have a little more shame. But with her usual innocence, Ayano responds, when it is about my master, shame does not matter. Hearing that unexpected reply, Masachika dashes out of the bathroom, face flushed, his emotions a mix of embarrassment and frustration. Masachika lay on his bed, reflecting on the wave of luck that had come his way that day. From an unexpected love confession in the park, seeing his sister in a swimsuit, to an incident in the bathroom, he could not help but think that tomorrow might bring some karmic retribution for all this good fortune. While he was deep in thought, Yuki suddenly appeared again, still in her swimsuit and laughing mockingly. Wow, you fell for the bathroom scene I set up earlier, she teased with a broad grin. Masachika immediately yelled, telling her to get out of his room. But Yuki just smirked and called for Ayano, who appeared right away, looking alert. Yuki casually asked Ayano, So, which parts of my brother did you see in the bathroom earlier? Ayano, innocently, was about to answer, but Masachika quickly cut her off, ordering Ayano to take Yuki out of the room. Once things were quiet again, Masachika's mind drifted back to the incident at the park. He was still finding it hard to believe that Masha had held onto her feelings for him all this time. He remembered the old days when he had confessed to Masha and they had briefly dated, though he had thought of it as just a childish phase. But seeing Masha's sincerity still intact after all this time left him feeling touched. On the other hand, thoughts of Alia's feelings suddenly crossed his mind, making him feel even more conflicted on this day full of events. Masachika wondered how both incredible sisters, Masha and Alia, could possibly have feelings for someone like him. Yes, he still carried a sense of insecurity and sometimes felt as if he was just a burden. Sometimes he wanted to escape from it all, to shut himself off and avoid getting involved with anyone. But while he was lost in his thoughts, Yuki came in again after her shower. Without a word, she jumped onto Masachika and leaned back on his stomach, leaving him with no choice but to let her do as she pleased. Yuki immediately sensed that her brother was feeling down, and with her almost radar-like ability, she even smelled the lingering scent of another girl on Masachika. 
She knew right away that he had been dealing with someone else earlier. To cheer him up, Yuki started bouncing playfully all over the bed, making Masachika dizzy. For some reason, she also kept trying to bite his neck, as if she were a vampire from an anime they had watched together. Masachika put on a serious face and immediately asked Yuki, Why do you always want to bite me? Yuki, mirroring his seriousness, then began to mockingly repeat the words Masachika once said during one of their debate competitions. Back then, Masachika, who was sick, caught Yuki cheating by trapping Alia into competing against her. Furious, Masachika had warned Yuki with the words, If you dare to bite, then you need to sharpen your teeth. He meant that if Yuki was bold enough to start something, she needed to be ready to see it through. Hearing his own words repeated in Yuki's typical style, Masachika fell silent, suddenly feeling embarrassed. He had not realized that Yuki's habit of trying to bite him was inspired by his own statement back then. Yuki laughed heartily, relishing Masachika's embarrassed expression as his own words came back to haunt him. Holding back his embarrassment, Masachika realized that Yuki had been trying to cheer him up all this time. Her actions now were very similar to the kindness Masha had shown him earlier. Masachika felt that same comforting feeling he had at the park, and without thinking, he sat up and hugged Yuki tightly, gently patting her head. Yuki was initially surprised, but then happily relaxed against his chest. In his still melancholic state, hugging Yuki, Masachika was suddenly taken aback by yet another of his sister's absurd suggestions. With a mischievous glint in her eyes, Yuki suggested that if Masachika was truly interested in the little sister route, the first step would be to make sure Ayano fell for him and agreed to bear his child. Masachika's face immediately flushed red, scolding Yuki, shocked by his sister's overly wild imagination. As if time had frozen, Ayano suddenly walked into the room with her usual innocent expression, having overheard the last part of their conversation. Without a moment's hesitation, she calmly said, I am ready, Masachika-sama, to bear your child. Both Masachika and Yuki fell silent, their faces unable to hide the shock at Ayano's incredible innocence. The awkward moment only escalated when Ayano suddenly added, Oh, and Yuki-sama, I have been researching what a means, which you often mention to me. Masachika and Yuki exchanged glances, relieved that Ayano might finally understand the term and hopefully be more aware of her behavior. However, just as they were about to sigh in relief, Ayano continued, So, I did some research and I know that Emin stands for masochist, but do not worry, I am not a masochist. <laughs> For a moment, Yuki and Masachika felt relieved. But soon after, Ayano added with a confident smile, But if Masachika-sama and Yuki-sama would like it, I do not mind being stepped on or whipped any time. Masachika could only cover his face with his hands, feeling the chaos grow even more intense. Meanwhile, Yuki, of course, grinned mischievously, showing no signs of stopping, savoring every second of the mayhem she had just set in motion. A few days later, Masachika and Alia were happily working on their summer assignments together. This time they were studying at Masachika's house, and since summer vacation started, Alia had been coming over frequently to study together. This time, they finished their work faster than usual. Normally, Alia would leave before evening, around late afternoon. But since they finished early today, there was still plenty of time before Alia's usual departure. This was where Masachika started to panic. Since Alia confessed her feelings, Masachika had not been able to joke around casually with her. Before, he could tease or flirt with Alia without a second thought. But now, knowing Alia's true feelings, he could not bring himself to make light of romantic topics. Realizing the atmosphere was becoming slightly awkward, Masachika felt lost. He could not just ask Alia to leave early. When he glanced at Alia, he noticed her twirling the end of her hair, as usual. Masachika knew this was a hint that she wanted to spend more time with him, but instead of responding, he froze, unsure of what to do or say. Masachika suddenly remembered his promise to Masha that he would begin to face Alia's feelings sincerely. Whether he would accept or reject them, the important thing was to stop running from the truth. If he continued avoiding it, 
It would feel like betraying Masha's feelings, who had stepped aside for Alia. Masachika tried to build up his courage to finally start a conversation. But just as he was about to speak, another topic slipped out instead, their upcoming student council nominations. Realizing that he ran away again, Masachika could only curse himself in his mind for being too cowardly. On the other hand, Alia, who had initially hoped for a bit of affection, suddenly put on a blank face and replied with a flat tone. Eventually, they began discussing preparations for the student council president election, and Masachika felt relieved for the moment, as the topic was now safe. Masachika then mentioned that they needed to improve their communication going forward. He realized that one of Alia's weaknesses was her difficulty working in a team. Alia was indeed independent and talented, but when it came to teamwork, she lacked sensitivity. Thus, Masachika tried to help Alia develop her awareness of her teammates. Starting with small things, Masachika taught Alia to read his facial expressions, so that Alia could eventually understand Masachika just from his facial expressions alone. Masachika immediately asked Alia to read his feelings just by looking at his expression. Alia tried to guess, but she used Russian so that if she was wrong, Masachika would not know. However, since Masachika understood Russian, he quickly realized that Alia was still not great at reading others' reactions. Alia became a bit frustrated, especially after Masachika identified another weakness of hers. Masachika just chuckled softly, while trying to encourage Alia not to feel too down. However, Alia did not want to lose, and she turned the tables by challenging Masachika to guess her thoughts just from her facial expression. Masachika agreed, thinking it would be a good chance to give Alia an example. Alia began to mumble in Russian, recalling one of their experiences from the previous summer camp. She told him about a not-so-direct kiss they shared, because they used the same spoon in the kitchen. Masachika, understanding every word, felt a serious attack from that story. Alia continued, even dropping hints in Russian that she actually wanted to be asked on a date by Masachika. Masachika, who understood her meaning, felt another huge impact, and nearly failed to keep his expression neutral. Alia felt relaxed talking like that, because she thought Masachika would not understand Russian. With a sly smile, Alia teased Masachika, calling him a coward who would not dare to ask a girl out first. Then she asked if Masachika could guess what she had just said. Now, Masachika was faced with two choices. The first option was to be honest and tell her that Alia was likely hinting at wanting to go on a date with him. But if he chose this, Alia might realize that Masachika had understood Russian all along, and she might be incredibly embarrassed because all her feelings had been exposed. The second option was for Masachika to pretend not to understand and just go along with Alia's game. However, the risk was that Alia would definitely tease him again, thinking that Masachika was not perceptive. After thinking for a moment, Masachika decided to go with the second option and pretend not to understand. Seeing Masachika's clueless reaction, Alia immediately put on a victorious smile. She even chuckled softly, glancing at Masachika with a satisfied expression. On the other hand, Masachika could only accept this humiliating defeat with resignation. All right, the first method had failed, so Masachika decided to try something else. He thought of teaching Alia to communicate using signals on the palm of the hand. The plan was for them to tap each other's palms to spell out words or phrases they wanted to convey. But as soon as Alia heard the idea, she was visibly shocked. She realized this meant their hands would often be in contact in the future. Masachika was confused by Alia's reaction, as he had no other intentions beyond practical signaling. A bit shy, Alia finally extended her palm, and Masachika began to put his idea into practice. He gently tapped his finger on Alia's palm, trying to form a secret code between them. Alia, however, began making playful sounds each time Masachika tapped her palm, disrupting his focus. Each time he tried to be serious, Alia would make a teasing sound again. So, as one could say, Masachika's mental resilience was being thoroughly tested. After finishing their secret code tapping, Masachika looked at Alia and realized she had been holding back her embarrassment the whole time. Even though Alia understood the intent behind the code well enough, her expression seemed to convey that her mental state was also affected by the intense closeness. Then, with a flushed face and a soft voice, 
Alia said, Masachika, you are so perverted. Masachika froze in place, baffled, since his intentions were genuinely innocent with no ulterior motives. However, he started to realize that if this method continued, he might have to prepare to hear Alia's teasing more often. Masachika quickly let go of Alia's hand, worried he might get slapped. With a hint of apprehension, he asked, So, did you understand the code just now? Alia, her face bright red, only nodded shyly. Masachika felt relieved that they had finally found a suitable way to communicate. Yet, he also realized there was a price to pay. He would have to brace himself to hear Alia's ASMR teasing more frequently in the future. After that, they spent another hour together. Masachika allowed Alia to practice tapping on his palm, or rather, he was forced to let her. Alia seemed very pleased, happily tapping on Masachika's palm until she finally felt satisfied. So that's pretty much the content of this light novel, Roshi Dere, for this time. What do you think? If you enjoy stories like this, 